now we're going to tie these two previous problems we've worked through together. And we're going to be asked the question, determine the velocity of our ball when it reaches the bottom of the ramp. Okay, so when the ball reaches the bottom of the ramp, down here, it will have some, or it will have some velocity parallel to the plane. And then whenever it reaches this part of the table that's a little bit flat, that velocity will become a horizontal velocity. And that's the horizontal velocity here that our object takes as it um, leaves the, the table and executes projectile motion. And so we're going to figure out what this velocity is at which the ball falls off the table, which is the same as the velocity that the ball has when it reaches the bottom of the incline plane. And so our question is, determine the velocity of the object when it reaches the bottom of the incline plane. So I'll call that um, V parallel, because that's the velocity of our ball parallel to the plane equals question mark. And so in the previous problem, we already determined what the parallel acceleration is, or the acceleration of our um, ball parallel to the plane. So we'll use that to help us solve the problem. And that acceleration parallel to the plane was g sine theta, where g is just positive 9.8 meters per second squared. So we are given a couple of pieces of information. We're given this angle. And so I'm going to say that this angle is 54.6 degrees. Okay. And we're also given the vertical height of this ball above the horizontal. And here that vertical height is 0 0.3 meters. Okay. So we're going to use this information in order to figure out what is the velocity of this ball parallel to the plane. So let's just jump right into that final equation that we need. The velocity of this ball parallel to the plane is equal to our acceleration parallel to the plane times the time it takes to roll down that whole distance plus the initial velocity parallel to the plane that it starts with. So we're going to assume, assume that um, our ball starts from rest, so this quantity is zero. So then this is equal to our parallel acceleration, g sine theta times time. But we don't you know yet what this time is, the time it takes for this, um, this ball to roll down the plane. So we're going to have to use something else to figure out what that time is. And to do that, uh, let's look at our um, position equation. And I'm going to write it a little bit differently than usual, okay? Instead of using x or y, I'm going to say d parallel. That's the distance of our ball parallel to the plane here equals, so the final position will be when we're down here, one half a parallel t squared plus the initial velocity parallel times time plus our initial position parallel to the plane. Okay, so we're going to say our initial position parallel to the plane up here, d0 parallel is zero meters. We're going to call that zero meters. And when we're down here, okay, that's this, this total distance right here that I'm drawing in right here. That's this total distance. Okay, so how do we get that distance? Maybe let me redraw this triangle over here. So we've got our incline plane. We've got this angle theta. We've got this entire length that I'm calling d parallel. We've got this height over here. That's the height our ball starts above the ground. So we have two sides of a right angle triangle. We've got this, um, this angle down here. Okay, so we can use trigonometry. We can say that the sine of our angle theta here equals opposite, so the height our ball is above the ground over um, over the hypotenuse, which is the distance that we travel along this plane. So if I rearrange this to solve for d parallel, d parallel is equal to h over sine theta, okay? So I'm going to take this and stick it in up here. 
So then I have h over sine theta equals 1 half a parallel t squared. Um, the initial velocity parallel to the plane is 0. Our final, or sorry, our initial position parallel to the plane up here, we also say is 0. Okay. So this is h over sine theta equals 1 half, and we know our a parallel was g sine theta times t squared. We got to solve this for t. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. That gets rid of the 1 half over here. So I've got 2h over sine theta equals g sine theta t squared. I divide both sides by g sine theta, and that gives me that t squared is equal to 2h over g sine squared theta. So if you see sine squared theta, sine squared theta is the same thing as taking sine of theta times sine of theta. Okay? It's just the same thing as x squared. x squared is equal to x times x. Okay? So this is our t squared. Um, to get just the t, we square root both sides. So t, the time it takes our ball to roll down the plane, is equal to the square root of 2 times the height that um, this ball is up on the uh, inclined plane divided by g sine squared theta. Okay, so that goes in right there. That's the t that goes in right here. So let's go ahead and plug in those numbers here. So that's 2 times 0 0.3 meters divided by 9.8 meters per second squared times sine of um, that angle is 54.6 degrees, and then we square that whole thing, okay? And then we have to take the square root of that whole thing. So if you plug all that into your calculator correctly, then this is t is equal to 0 0.304 seconds. So this is t. That's the t, the time it takes to roll down the plane. So we stick that in here. So then g, or sorry, our velocity parallel to the plane is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared times sine of our 54.6 degrees times our 0 0.304 seconds from over here, okay? And so, finally, plugging all that in, we've got that our velocity parallel to the plane the velocity, final velocity when our object reaches the bottom of this plane is going to equal 2.42 meters per second. Okay, all of that work in order to get this velocity. So, <laughs> our ball starting up here from rest, it rolls down the plane, it has an acceleration, so it's gaining speed. When it reaches here at the bottom of the inclined plane, that's the final velocity that we get when we're rolling down the plane. That velocity is constant as we move across the table. That's the velocity at which our ball launches horizontally from the edge of the table and then falls down to the ground.